Get the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. You can see that in 2010, HUD introduced a couple products called the Heckam Saver and the Heckam for Purchase. Um, by the end of this month, HUD has announced that they are going to make some further changes to the program. They have said that they are going to announce this by the end of this month, the end of August, with implementation October 1st. October 1st is the beginning of the HUD uh, fiscal year. What those change, we don't know exactly what it is, but what it, it is expected to be is a, some sort of a financial assessment. Right now, there are no income requirements, no credit requirements. There will be a little bit of credit requirement. What exactly it's gonna be, we don't know. Um, there might be a limit on how much money you can withdraw up front. There might be set-asides for taxes and insurance. Sort of like how if you have a conventional mortgage, you're escrowing your taxes and insurance payment. There might be something like that, but at this point, as I said, we don't exactly know what it's gonna be. So we're talking about living in place. So we all may be coming back next summer. I guess that's the point. I guess that's the point. We'll be back. <laughs> um, living in place. Everybody hears it is aging in place. I much prefer to use the word living in place. Who wants to sit home and age? <laughs> we want to sit there. We want to live, and we want to live in the place that we know. That's why you know studies will show up with 85 percent or more folks want to stay at home. But the key is to do it safely. And how do you fund that in order to do that safely? So the great news here is, is that we're all living longer. In the beginning part of the, in the early 1900s, the average lifespan was 49 years. Today it's about 78. The average 65-year-old couple, one of them is expected to live until 92. So long gone are the days when you retired at 62 and you passed away at 62 in a day. Those days are long gone. So that's the good news. The bad news is, is that we're all living longer. And living longer, there's a cost involved in that. Whether we're gonna go to a nursing home, whether we're gonna go to an assisted living facility, or we wanna stay put. There's a cost to staying put to make those modifications that we need in order to do that. Um, Frank and Mary is, we're using Frank and Mary as our example. Modest incomes, the vast majority of us have very modest incomes, which can make it difficult to make those payments that we need to make. Taxes, insurance, if we need to bring services into the home, medical services, non-medical services, whatever that might be. Um, and obviously, there's the reluctance to tap home equity to do that. What can the money be used for? One of the, one of the big things it's used for today is to pay off a conventional mortgage. You have a conventional mortgage, it's costing you $1,000 a month. $1,000 a month is coming out of your pocket and going to the bank. So it makes things a little bit difficult. With a reverse mortgage, with a HECA mortgage, you can pay off that current mortgage. That $1,000 now stays in your pocket. You have no mandatory payments with the heck of mortgage. Life gets a little bit easier. It gets a little bit easier to pay the taxes and insurance or bring in the services that we need. Um, money can be used for to make these modifications that we need to replace taxable income with non-taxable income. I mean, there's a million different reasons. It all depends on what your need happens to be. And one of my favorite sayings is, is that whenever there is a need, something is going to take a hit to satisfy that need. So the question becomes is what's going to take the hit? Is it cash on hand? Is it the 401k policy? Is it your investment portfolio? Or might it be tax-free dollars from your home, tapping some of that equity and using that? 
Consumer Safeguard, um, it's a federal program. There are a lot of consumer safeguards that are put into place. The one I really want to stress upon is anybody that is going to do one of these mortgages must speak with an independent third party HUD approved counselor. The reason for that is, is they want to go over the loan with you, go over the specifics with you. After you've sat down and talked with me and I go through it with you, they go through it with you also. And it's they want to make sure that you understand the program. They want to make sure that you're being led down the right road. But more importantly, they want to make sure that we're not talking with somebody that might have some cognitive issues that'll have dementia, that might have Alzheimer's, that very well might be uh, being taken advantage of. Because quite frankly, and by federal rules, without, once, you're, once you complete the counseling, they issue a certificate. Without that certificate, you cannot sign an application. So we can talk all day, and we can sit down and discuss all this, but without that certificate from the counseling, we can't even sign an application yet. So it's a great safeguard, and just think about it this way. If there was a program like that for conventional mortgages six years ago, how many think would be, how many of you here today think that we would be in the position that we're in today, in the financial crisis that we've had today? If they had that on conventional mortgages, we wouldn't be where we are today. So how do you get the money? How do they figure this out? It's based, the loan is based upon three factors. The age of the youngest borrower, the appraised value of the property or the HUD lending limit, and the current interest rate in the marketplace at the time based upon the 10-year swap. Now I say the age of the youngest borrower simply because these are all based on actuarial tables. The younger you are, the longer life expectancy you have, so therefore, you're going to get access to less dollars because they need to leave more room in that loan for it to grow. As you age, our life expectancy diminishes, so therefore you can get access to more dollars. Frank and Mary's home is appraised at $400,000. That would be the number that they would use to figure out what they would have access to. If Frank and Mary's home was worth a million dollars, everything would be based upon the 625.5 because that's the federal lending limit. Um, once we figure that, it's how can I access this money now? How are they going to give me this money? You have various ways that you can access it. You can take it as a lump sum, a guaranteed line of credit with a growth factor. You can take it as a lifetime monthly payments. You can set a term. When I say guaranteed line of credit, what do I mean by that? What I mean is that that loan will never be called, that line of credit will never be called, it will never be canceled, it will never be cut. We all heard about, the <clears throat> excuse me, the horror stories from a few years back, back that everybody that had these lines of credit, the banks were calling them. Well, by federal law, they can't do that with one of these. And they do have a growth factor to it. Any dollars that are in that line of credit will grow year by year by year. Lifetime monthly payments. You live to be 110 years old and you're still in that house, God bless you, that's wonderful. That check will keep on coming whether you outstrip the value of the property or not. It doesn't matter. Specified term, I'd like X amount of dollars for X amount of years. Sort of like that. Or you can do combinations. Sort of what Frank and Mary are going to do. They need to make some home modifications. So they're going to do one of these. They're going to take a lump sum up front to facilitate those modifications, put a few dollars into their checking account, and the rest is going to go into a line of credit. And I'll show you an example of that is in a few minutes. Steve, just, I just want sure. to give you a question. So if you're my client that I was just talking to, if you're, if you're thinking about, well, do I want to get a new line of credit to replace the old line of credit, or do I want to do a reverse mortgage? The right. question is, the nice thing with the old line, with the line of credit is you can always pay it back. If you're just feeling like, oh, I'm losing sleep, I've got this thing, right? Right. If, if it's a reverse mortgage and you pulled money out through a line of credit, can you pay the money back? Yes. You can pay it you back can, early. You can pay it back and early. And you can just restore that same line of credit that you have. It becomes a revolve. Exactly. Okay. Thank exactly. You. you can pay it back. No prepayment penalty to do that either. Thank you. Um, there's a cost to everything in life. We know that. 
The cost on, on a HECA mortgage is the mortgage insurance premium, and what the mortgage insurance premium does, it serves a couple of different purposes. One, it's going to guarantee that the bank always gets their money. Banks never lose, we know that. It's going to guarantee that they always get their money, that they will be made whole. It will also protect you as the borrower and your estate, your assets of your estate, and the heirs of your estate, because they will not be responsible for anything that is owed above and beyond the value of the property. If you end up owing more on the mortgage than the value of the property, what happens at that point is the lender will file a claim with FHA who goes into the mortgage insurance pool and pays the bank above and beyond what is owed on, of the property value. Um, so there we, oh, the other part, and that's what also protects your, the heirs of your estate and the assets of your estate because the lender becomes whole by the insurance you, your estate is off the hook and your assets are, are free and clear of having to pay that back. So we have two different programs on the HECM. There's a standard program and there's the SAVER program. On the standard program, the mortgage insurance premium is 2% of the value of the property up to the lending limit, up to that 625.5. So again, if Frank and Mary had a million dollar home, that mortgage insurance premium is going to be based upon 625.5. On and, this, and, if they, and if they have their $400,000 home, it'll be 2% of the 400000 It's going to be $8,000. It'll be $8,000. Okay. Correct. Correct. On the SAVER program, it is 0.01%. Again, 0.01% of the value of the property. Big, big cost savings right there. Then you have your origination fee. Your origination fee is based, it's 2% of the first 200,000 of home value, and then it's 1% of anything above and beyond that $200,000, and it's capped at $6,000. Those, those three costs are all set by HUD. HUD regulates that, HUD comes to the lending community and says, this is what you can charge, this is how much you can charge, and this is what you can charge for. They set all those ground rules. You'll see also the third party closing costs. That's your typical closing costs that you're gonna have in any type of mortgage. It's gonna be your lawyer's fees, your appraisals, your mortgage recording, your title searches. We're all familiar with those. Any of us that have had a mortgage in the past, we've all gone through those closing costs. Same closing costs that'll come with the heck of mortgage. So let's take a look, let's put all of that together and take a look at an example of how this is going to work for Frank and Mary. You know, as we said, Frank and Mary, we're going to make them 70 years old with a $400,000 property. You'll see the principal limit is $245,000. And I should say that's the principal limit on the standard program. 